Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. I love the language that the great author and researcher, Brene Brown, uses when she makes the distinction that kind is clear. Kind is clear. I love this language because when we use the word kind or we talk about kindness, oftentimes what people can have in their head is that kindness is soft and that it's just about being nice. And yet, I love this language because not only do we want to be kind, to be careful and gentle and helpful and, yes, nice to people, but kindness is also about clarity. Are we able and willing as leaders and in the culture that we create, are we able to be kind and caring with people and also clear about what we're trying to accomplish and what is expected and what role we all play in creating that kind of culture. The other day I was driving down the road and evidently I, uh, you know, moved over from one lane to another in a way that evidently made another car on the road disappointed in my movement. And so when I got up to the next light, the car that pulled up beside of me was honking their horn and a middle finger was extended out the window and the look on this woman's face was not kind. She was angry, Some evidently me switching lanes. I didn't give her enough space or something, but the message that she was giving me with that long, extended, crooked middle finger and the look on her face was not kind It might have been clear what she was trying to, uh, the message she was trying to send me. But that's not the kind of message that I'm talking about, that we're not wanting just to be clear without being kind. But in fact, part of kindness is being able to be clear and caring in the same way. And so this woman that was extending her, her middle finger and saying that she was sending me a message, but I'm not, that's not the type of clarity around kindness that I'm going for. But I also still remember when my mom, at different points in my life, when I had maybe not um, lived up to expectations, or maybe she knew I hadn't done my best, or she knew that maybe... Um, I had made a mistake in a way that I wish I would have done differently. She would say to me, Jason, I know you're capable of more. I know you're capable of more. The look in her face and the message that she was giving me was she was telling me that, that, that what is expected of me and acknowledging that maybe I wasn't living up to the standards or the values that I had set for myself or that we had set for, for our family. And she was sending the message very clearly that I know you can do better and that alternative actions are needed next time. But she was doing it in a kind way. She was not skirting around the issue. She was not sugarcoating it. She was not... Um, But she also wasn't mean, wasn't demeaning, wasn't just trying to make me feel bad because I had not lived up to those expectations or standards. She was very clearly saying, Jason, I know you're capable of more, but yet the look in her eyes and on her face I knew were kind because she was willing to tell me. She was willing to look at me and say, I know you're capable of more and I care about you so much 
that I'm going to be clear with you, but I'm also not going to just throw darts at you or make you feel bad. And so her words and her actions were kind because they were clear and caring. In a world that is more busy than effective, you've heard me talk about that in the past, that so often in our own personal lives, but certainly in our teams and organizations where we're rushing around, oftentimes we live into these cultures that are much more busy than actually effective. They're much more often scattered and disconnected, and many relationships and teams are end up then because of this pace and this busyness and scatteredness, we end up becoming disengaged. And yet we know that in the midst of all of that, communication is key. How we communicate with one another, how we identify those expectations culturally for each other, how we decide how we're going to show up to our work and how we're going to lead The way we communicate with each other and communicate what is expected is everything. How we communicate plays such a powerful role in our own effectiveness, our performance, and the culture that we build with those around us. And unfortunately, many leaders, teams, and organizations are poor communicators. We give messages every single day that aren't kind and caring, and oftentimes certainly aren't clear. And so there's a great opportunity for all of us to raise the level and think about what does it mean to communicate messages that are kind, caring, and clear. George Bernard Shaw said, I love this quote, said, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion it has taken place. The single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it's taken place. We think we've communicated something. We think something has been communicated so well. We think that it's clear. But we aren't, when we aren't being clear, kind, or effective, people feel it. And our work, our relationships, our performance suffers. And so even though oftentimes we think we've communicated, we think things have been clear, but when they aren't, when things aren't clear, they aren't kind, and they end up not being effective, our work, our relationships, our performance suffer. So it is kind to ourselves and also to others to take the time to get clear on the message that we're trying to communicate. To take time to step back and say, to make sure in our own mind and our own thoughts, what are we trying to communicate? What's the story? What needs to be shared? Then, once we get that clear, because I I have a feeling that the woman in the car that was honking her horn and sticking out her middle finger and giving me that message, in her mind, the message was clear. You know, what she was trying to communicate and the story she was trying to tell and she was sharing it was clear. But was it effective? And in the end, even if you think it was effective as it drove a result, is it effective in the sense of being a part of creating the culture that you want on your team and in your organization and in the world? So once we are clear and take the time to step back and realize what is what are we trying to communicate, what's the message, what needs to be shared, then our effectiveness as communicators is when we honor the human being on the other end of the exchange to help remove the negative emotion, even though at times in our lives, of course, things are negative and, of course, uh, we are upset But the effectiveness of that communication is when we're able to honor the human element on the other end of the exchange to help remove the negative emotion, but sit with them, sit with clear communication about what is needed. It's kind to be clear with those we love, we work with, those people that we count on every day to execute our strategy, the people that we collaborate with and work with on our teams, it is kind to be clear and caring and all the, 
oh, by the way, makes us more effective at what we do. We don't want to sugarcoat things, but we do want to bring clarity to the message. But before you go there, because I know where you go in your own mind, let me jump in and make a huge distinction. Kind messages aren't about blaming, complaining, or pointing the fingers at at others. So if in your mind you think about, well, I'm being kind because I'm being clear, and so I'm coming into the room and I'm going to blame somebody or complain or point the fingers at, finger at somebody else, that's just because you might be being clear about your feelings. It certainly isn't kind and caring and clear and focused on honoring the other human and the culture you're trying to create. It's not about kind isn't a sp- and clarity isn't about a spirit of hurting someone. That isn't kind. Even though sometimes we have very firm, important things to talk about. If all we do is come into a room trying to hurt somebody, that isn't kind. That's being a jerk, a bully, a quote-unquote boss in the traditional hierarchical sense. The best communication and the best communicators realize that it's a two-way street. Both parties and participants share in the results and share in the creation of the experience. Both take ownership. We both may own different actions that are needed, depending on the different roles that we play, but both take ownership in stimulating progress for the relationship, for the team, for the mission of the organization that's greater than ourselves. Even in that situation where you might be a boss or uh, someone higher in the hierarchical sense is, um, you know, it's your job to then to uh, have a corrective action and to talk to somebody in a uncomfortable setting. It still is a two way street. And the best managers, the best leaders, the best bosses, the best parents, the best fill in the blank are the ones in the midst of that situation are able to see how can I be caring and kind by being clear with the message, but not of the spirit of throwing darts at them, but to say, how can we, and how can I support you? How can we do this better? One of the epidemics that's in workplaces and and communities, of course, in the world, but in workplaces in particular that I see it is what is referred to as triangulation. You know this because it happens in every human dynamic on the planet. Person A and person B, you know, have a a disagreement with each other or a problem or an issue with each other. And so person A and person B have, have the issue. But who does person B go find? Right? You know this. Person B goes find goes to find person C, which creates that triangle. And person C you know, oftentimes what happens is person B comes to them and starts to, in many ways, it, it, it teams and organizations around the water cooler or in the parking lot or, or, or in, in, you know, behind closed doors in, in the organization or in the hallways. It's, can you believe what person A did? And person B often, you know, it starts out with, can you believe them? And it's a, uh, you know, a monologue about how person A is wrong, is bad. It's whatever they did is hurtful, and person C plays an enormous role in how the the exchange goes. And in every team dynamic and every human team communication in the world, every human communication in the world, in that triangle, person C plays an enormous role because person C can usually go one of two ways. They can go down the path, which is typical, which is, throwing fuel on the fire. Yeah, you're right. Can you I can't believe that. Person A did what? You're telling me they did that? They did what? And you're right. They are wrong and start throwing fuel on the fire. And all of a sudden in the midst of this exchange, person B and person C have now, you know, corroborated with and and are in this together against person And yet at the end of the exchange, has the situation gotten better or worse? Worse, of course. 
the issue hasn't been resolved. And in fact, now this little spark of, uh, you know, uh, an uncomfortable situation or a, a, a little problem is now a brush fire that involves more than two people. And oftentimes in organizations and team dynamics, human dynamics, this becomes the culture that when we have somebody, you know, a situation that doesn't go our way or something doesn't work out or something that we're upset about, we go find the person that will listen to us and we quote unquote vent to them. But unfortunately, in a lot of teams and a lot of cultures, that becomes the culture. And yet in healthy, thriving kind, caring, clear cultures, that person C takes a different path. They listen to them. They absorb what they're saying. They ask clarifying questions. Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me more about what you think happened or what you heard or what that is. And they listen, they listen. And then at the end of that, after they've absorbed and they've listened and they've been that ear for somebody to share what's on their mind, then are able to say, well, you know, this sounds like this is between you and person A. And I know person A, and I, I'm i guessing that something got lost in translation or that isn't right, or they have a different point of view. It sounds like if you have that problem with them or this miscommunication, then really the two of you need to get together. And so I want to be supportive to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check back with you in a week, and I want to see how that conversation went. Because it sounds like the two of you need to talk about this together. Now, as I give that example in many teams and organizations, I often ask them, is this realistic? And many people throw their hands in the air and say, this isn't realistic. No, it's, it's not realistic because people won't really do it. And once we talk that out, finally people come around to saying, yes, it's realistic, but it's difficult. Is it possible? Yes. Is it difficult? Yes. And the reason why this triangulation exists is because that's a human dynamic of the way that we've learned how to communicate with one another. And oftentimes it's easier to place blame or judgment and go find the person that will agree with us rather than dealing with the issue at hand. And yet cultures that are kind and caring and clear about the mission that's bigger than themselves will choose to go a different path. The reason why I'm sharing about this also is because many of you listening on this podcast, I'm sure that all of us, we find ourselves in the role of person C quite frequently. Many leaders do. And so your response sets the temperature for how your team is committed to communicating. And your response in person C, if it's throw fuel on the fire, scapegoating, blame, then that's the culture that gets created. And yet if you show people, model for people, that as the leader, your response as person C is actually clear, kind, and connected to the mission and the culture that's bigger than you, then that is the temperature that gets set. So we all set the temperature every single day by the way we communicate with the people around us. And the best in the world that I've studied and the teams and organizations that that we're lucky to work with to help to shape the way we lead and the culture we create, I can tell you this, that the best that set that temperature are the ones that honor the human element. They realize communication is a two-way street and they realize that our messages Our language needs to be clear, but also kind, caring, and backed up with action. So the first step for many teams and many relationships is to have the conversation that is about what is acceptable within your culture. What is acceptable within the culture of how we communicate with each other? How are we committed to communicating together moving forward? And the best teams and organizations are in the ethic, the practice of developing these skills and working and modeling on how we communicate together. What are our standards, our expectations for how we're going to communicate together? 
So as always, here are a couple of questions for you to ponder this week or as you're listening to this to carry the ideas from this podcast into your life and your work. Some questions for you to ponder. What is the culture of communication within your team, within your family, your relationships, or your entire organization or company that you work for? What is the culture of that communication? What messages are needed to be communicated next? How do you keep them kind and clear and caring? Remember, in a world of busyness and much blame, how we communicate matters. All of us are going to have to communicate firm, clear, important messages about what's acceptable and what's not. But all of us can do it in a kind, clear, and caring way. How we communicate matters. Are your words clear, kind, and connected? Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to your organization, or you have a question or comment about this podcast, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we all are ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.